Hi everybody, welcome to a new PyTorch tutorial. Today we learn about the autograd package in PyTorch and how we can calculate gradients with it. Gradients are essential for our model optimization, so this is a very important concept that we should understand. Luckily PyTorch provides the autograd package which can do all the computations for us. We just have to know how to use it. So let's start to see how we can calculate gradients in PyTorch. So first of all we import torch of course and now let's create a tensor x equals torch dot rand n of size 3 and now let's print our x. So this is a tensor with three values so three random values and now let's say later we want to calculate the gradients of some function with respect to x then what we have to do is we must specify the argument requires grad equals true. So by default this is false. And now if we run this again, then we see that also PyTorch tracks that it requires the gradient. And now whenever we do operations with this tensor, PyTorch will create a so-called computational graph for us. So now let's say we do the operation x plus 2 and we store this in an output. So we say y equals x plus 2. Then this will create the computational graph and this looks like this. So for each node we have a, or for each operation we have a node with inputs and an output. So here the operation is the plus, so an addition and our inputs are x and 2 and the output is y. And now with this graph and the technique that is called backpropagation, we can then calculate the gradients. I will explain the concept of backpropagation in detail in the next video, but for now it's fine to just know that we, or how we can use it. So, First we do a forward pass, so here we apply this operation and in the forward pass we calculate the output y and since we specified that it requires the gradient, PyTorch will then automatically create and store a function for us and this function is then used in the backpropagation um, to get the gradients. So here y has an attribute grad underscore fn. So this will point to a gradient function and in this case it's called add, add backward. And with this function we can then calculate the gradients in the so-called backward pass. So this will calculate the gradient of y with respect to x in this case. So now if we print y then we will see exactly this grad fn attribute and here this is an add backward function. So because here our operation was a plus and then our um, then we do the back propagation later so that's why it's called add backward. And let's do some more operation with our tensors. So let's say we have c equals y times y times 2 for example. So this tensor then also has this grad function attribute. So here grad fn equals mul backward because here our operation is a multiplication. And for example we can say c equals c dot mean. So we can apply a mean operation and then our gradient function is the mean backward. And now when we want to calculate the gradients, the only thing that we must do is to call c dot backward. So this will then calculate the gradient of c with respect to x. So x then has a gradient, a dot grad attribute where the gradients are stored. So we can print this. And now if we run this, then we see that we have the gradients here in this tensor. So this is all we have to do. And now let's have a look what happens when we don't specify this argument. 
So first of all, if we print our tensors, then we see that they don't have this grad function attribute. And if we try to call the backward function, then this will produce an error. So it says tensors does not require grad and does not have the grad function. So remember that we must specify this argument and then it will work. And one thing that we should also know is, so in the background, what this basically does, this will create a so-called vector Jacobian product to get the gradients. So this will look like this. I will not go into the mathematical details, but we should know that we have the Jacobian matrix with the partial derivatives. And then we multiply this with a gradient vector. And then we will get the final, the final gradients that we are interested in. So this is also called the chain rule. And I will also explain this more in detail in the next video. But yeah, we should know that actually we must multiply it with a vector. So in this case, since our C is a scalar value, we don't have to put the, um, don't have to use an argument here for our backward function. So our C here has only one value. So this is fine. But let's say we didn't apply the mean operation. So now our C has more than one value in it. So it's also size one by three. And now when we try to call the backward function like this, then this will produce an error. So grid can be implicitly created only for scalar outputs. So in this case, we have to give it the gradient argument. So we have to create a vector of the same size. So let's say v equals torch dot tensor. And here we put, um, for example, point 1, 1.0 and point zero, zero 0.01. And we give it a data type of torch dot load 32. And then we must pass this vector to our backward function. And now it will work again. So now if we run this, then this is okay. So we should know that in the background, this is a, Ch a vector Jacobian product. And a lot of times the last operation is some operation that will create a scalar value. So this is it's okay to call it like this without an argument. But if this is not an, a scalar, then we must give it the, the vector. And yeah, then some other thing that we should know is how we can prevent um, PyTorch from tracking the history and uh, calculating this grad FN attribute. So for example, sometimes during our training loop, when we want to update our weights, then this operation should not be part of the gradient computation. So in one of the next tutorials, I will give a concrete example of how we apply this autocrat package and then it will become clearer maybe. But yeah, for now we should know how we can prevent this from, from tracking the gradients. And we have three options for this. So the first one is to call the requires grad underscore function and set this to false. The second option is to call x dot detach. So this will create a new tensor that doesn't require the gradient. And the second option would be to wrap this in a with statement. So with torch dot no grad, and then we can do our operations. So yeah, let's try each of these. So first we can say x dot requires grad underscore and set this to false. So whenever a function has a trailing underscore in PyTorch, then this means that it will modify our variable in place. So now if you print x, 
then we will see that it doesn't have this require grad attribute anymore. So now this is false. So this is the first option. And the second option would be to call um, x detach. So we say y equals x dot detach. So this will create a new vector with the same or a new tensor with the same values, but it doesn't require the gradient. So here we see that our y has the same values, but doesn't require the gradients. And the last option is to wrap it in a torch in a with, with statement with torch dot no grad. And then we can do some operations, for example, y equals x plus two. And now if we print our y, then we see that it doesn't have the gradient function attribute here. So yeah, if we don't use this and would run it like this, then our y has the gradient function. So these are the three ways how we can stop um, PyTorch from creating this gradient functions and tracking the history in our computational graph. And now one more very important thing that we should also know is that whenever we call the backward function, then the gradient for this tensor will be accumulated into the dot grad attribute. So the values will be summed up. So here we, we must be very careful. So let's create some dummy training example where we have some, have some weights. So this is a, a tensor with ones in it of size, let's say four, and they require the gradient. So requires grad equals true. And now let's say we have a training loop where we say for epoch in range. And first let's only do one iteration. And here we do, let's say model output equals, um, let's say, weights times three dot sum. So this is just a dummy operation, which will simulate some model output. And then we want to calculate the gradients. So we say model output dot backward. And now we have the gradient. So we can call weights dot grad and print this. Um, so our gradients here are three. So the tensor is filled with threes. And now if we do another iteration, so if we say we have two iterations, then the second backward call will again accumulate the values and write them into the grad attribute. So now our grad has sixes in it. And now if we do a third iteration, then it has nines in it. So all the values are summed up and now our weights or our gradients are clearly incorrect. So before we do the next iteration and optimization step, we must empty the gradients. So we must call weights dot grad dot zero underscore. And now if we run this, then our gradients are correct again. So this is one very important uh, thing that we must know during our training steps. And later we will work with the PyTorch built in optimizers. So let's say we have a optimizer from the torch optimization package. So torch dot optim dot SGD for stochastic gradient descent, which has our weights as parameters and some learning rate. And now with this optimizer, we can call or do a optimization step. And then before we do the next iteration, we must call the optimizer dot zero grad function, which will do exactly the same. So yeah, we will talk about the optimizers in some later tutorials, but 
Yeah, for now, the things you should remember is that whenever we want to calculate the gradients, we must specify the require scrut parameter and set this to true. Then we can simply um, calculate the gradients with um, calling the backward function. And before we want to do the next operation or the next iteration in our optimization steps, we must empty our gradient, so we must call the zero um, function again. And we also should know how we can prevent some operations from being tracked in the computational graph. And that's all I wanted to show you for now with the Autograd package. And I hope you liked it. Please subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.